the signs of sound. Turn it up. Whoa! Look at that! Science club for girls lie. Let's all take one deep dive into the world of science, technology, engineering, and math. Get your safety goggles, cause we're making things explode. Science is so fun, so let's take it on the road. Meet a young scientist just like you, and learn all about what they do. We'll even learn science that's in the news, through one-on-one -on -one interviews, with SCMG Live and friends. Experimenting never ends. Now let's see what's in store. Just press play and get ready to explore. Ho, 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 hey, hey, hey. Ho, 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 hey. Hi, everyone. Welcome to SCFG Live. Uh, Hannah? Yeah. I don't think we can hear you. Oh, right. Okay. Let me try one more time, okay? okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to SCFG Live. Oh, okay. Now I think the penguins can hear you. Oh, okay. Wait, you know what? Let me just try one more time. Uh, I got okay. this. I got I'll be right back. Okay. Hi everyone, and welcome to SCFG Live. It's so great to see all of you for another scientific adventure. I know I'm excited, and I'm sure Sally is too. Wait, where did Sally go? Oh. Sally, what are you listening to? She can't hear me. Sally, what are you listening to? All right, I'm gonna need your help, young scientist. Ask Sally what she's listening to. Ready? One, two, three. Sally! What are you listening to? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was listening to my favorite song. I love pop rock. Sally, do you know uh do you know how our ears actually are able to hear music and other sounds? Oh yeah, with our ears. Well, yeah, but do you know how exactly? Oh yeah. Um so a magical fairy comes and waves her wand and bam, you can hear things. Hmm. Um, well, I want to say that you're right, because I love that idea, but I think it might have a little bit more to do with science. Does this mean we get to go on another scientific exploration and find out how hearing works? It sure does. Are you ready? Yeah! Are you ready at home? Yeah! All right, let's go! Woo! scientists so glad to see you all today I am so excited to learn more about sound and hearing with you all and luckily for me I have two young scientists here with me to be my buddies you guys want to introduce yourself hi my name is Kaya and what's your name buddy is your name oh well we got a buddy here <laughs> and we're gonna be doing an experiment today we, today we are going to make a paper cup telephone, or a plastic cup telephone. For this experiment, we're going to need two plastic cups. We're going to need a pair of scissors. And we're, we're going to need a string. And we're going to need a sharp pencil and needle. <laughs> so the first step is to decorate your cup. You can use stickers or anything you want. Next step, you're gonna ask an adult to poke a hole in the bottom of the cup, right here. So then, you, and then you're gonna take your string and you're gonna put your string through the hole where your adults poke your little hole in your cup. You're gonna wanna pull it, tie a bead at the end of the string. And remember to not make your hole too big that your bead can't fit in through. Here. Uh -huh. 
Isn't that cool? Yeah! Now, how did our two scientist friends communicate to each other without using phones? Well, sound could travel in vibrations. Vibrations are really fast back and forth movements. You can see vibrations after you pluck a guitar string. You can feel vibrations when you touch a speaker playing a song. Well, sound can travel in vibrations, and between the two cups, there was a string that was carrying the vibration of the sound to the other cup, so then you could hear. Wow, now that we know how sound travels, now we're gonna see how we receive those vibrations and how our ear can tell our brain exactly what we're hearing from those vibrations. Awesome. In order to understand how the ear works, we're actually going to build a model of the ear so we can see every single part and how we are able to hear sound. Remember to have an adult near you to help you with this project. For this model, you will need a balloon, a cardboard roll, tape, cardstock, a shoebox, a wooden spoon, a large plastic bowl, a small plastic bowl of water, and a straw. First, let's cut the neck off the balloon like this. Then, wrap the balloon around one end of the cardboard tube like so. This will serve as our eardrum. Then, we are going to roll a piece of cardstock into a cone with a small opening about the size of our thumb and tape it to the other end of the cone like this. This will serve as the opening of our ear. Now we're gonna balance our ear model on top of a shoebox. And you're gonna place the eardrum part near the water and the outer layer of the ear on the outside. Now you're gonna take your straw and tape it to the eardrum part and let the straw touch the surface of the water. You're gonna wanna tape it in place. The straw is gonna help us visualize on the water the vibrations the ear is receiving. Now it's time to test out your contraption. Take out your wooden spoon and bowl and bang away. See the loud noise entered through the ear opening and went through the ear canal to the eardrum, vibrating the eardrum and it went through the straw, vibrating the water. The vibrations pass through our eardrum and then signals get sent to our brain through nerves. And those nerves are telling the brain that the vibrations that we're feeling is actually sound. So whenever you're hearing music or people talking, there's thousands of vibrations being sent to the eardrum and being converted to a signal to the brain to let us know that that is sound. Hi everybody, I don't know about you, but I learned so much in this episode so far about sound and ears. I can't wait to go home and listen to my music very loudly. What? Oh, oh, okay. Sally just let me know that listening to music really loudly actually is really bad for you. It could damage your ears. Hmm, I wonder why that is. I know, decibels. Decibels is a fancy word for a measurement that we use for sound. The higher a decibel is, the louder the sound is. The lower a decibel is, the quieter a sound is. When decibels get too high, that can cause damage to your ear. Remember what we talked about? There's a bunch of different nerves and structures in your ear. So if the decibel's too high, it can cause damage into your ear, which can result in temporary, or for a little bit of time, or permanent, which is for a really long time, damage to your ear. This can cause hearing loss, pain, or ringing in your ears. Why does this happen? Remember how we talked about sound has vibrations. So when a decibel or the sound is really loud and really high, it can have really big vibrations. So it'll rattle the things in our ear and start to damage them. This can happen in many ways. By listening to loud music for a long period of time, attending sports events, or even things like loud power drills. Some people have jobs where they have to listen to loud noises all day long, like construction workers. 
but they can help their hearing loss and save their ears by wearing earplugs or sometimes noise canceling headphones. That means you can't hear anything. Hello? Hello? This can reduce the strength of the vibration. So that means that it won't damage your ear. Sometimes they even stop the vibration from even coming in. If hearing loss does occur, there are something called hearing aids that people can use that are put into your ear. Hearing aids come in all shapes and sizes. They work similar to microphones and speakers. They amplify or they make the vibrations higher from the sound that is coming so that your ear can detect all those vibrations and send the signals to your brain that there's sound coming in. There are still many ways to communicate though, which we'll talk about later in the show. But remember, we still wanna keep our ears safe. So remember when you're listening to music or at a loud event, try to avoid that as much as possible and protect your ears. Okay, bye young scientists, thanks for listening. Hey young scientists, are you interested in the other forms of communication that Hannah mentioned before? I am too. So one other way that we communicate is through visual cues or through our eyes. There are lots of things that we can see that help us communicate with each other. And a lot of deaf or hard of hearing people use these visual clues to communicate. So let's learn about them. One of them is captions. If you're watching a video like this one right now, sometimes you'll see words at the bottom like over here. No. Those captions are just saying whatever is being said or heard so that anyone can understand what's happening in the video. There's also a language called sign language. Sign language is using your hands to communicate different things. I'm gonna call on my handy dandy hand to show us three letters of the alphabet. Handy dandy hand. Handy dandy hand, can you show me A? Handy dandy hand, can you show me B? Handy dandy hand, can you show me C? Okay, handy dandy hand, that's all we have time for. So, you can learn the whole alphabet and communicate with people who use American Sign Language. There's also different languages of sign language. There's American Sign Language, there is Chinese Sign Language, there's French Sign Language, all over the world. There are other ways to interpret how we're feeling too. You know, how people do art, or people dance or sing. Those are different ways of communication too. Well, that's all we have time for at Sally's Corner. Thanks for listening to me. Bye! Hey, young scientists. Hey, Sally. Hey, everybody. Oh, I learned so much today. Oh, me too. Tell me, Sally, what was like one thing that you learned? Well, is it magical fairies that give us hearing powers? Yeah. I kind of had a feeling that wasn't right. In fact, we learned today that sound is energy in the form of vibrations. And certain parts inside of our ears detect those vibrations as either music or speech or even things like rain. Yeah. Oh, and sound isn't the only way to communicate with others. That's right. We can use things like captions or sign language to communicate without using any sounds. Yeah, isn't that so cool? Now I'm going to learn how to use sign language so I can talk to my neighbor who uses sign language. That's awesome. I love that idea. I think I might do the same. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us for another episode on SCFG Live. We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.